one more time. It's a very important message. This is my dinner. It is cauliflower rice. I made um, it, like an Indian style cauliflower rice. It's got broccoli, carrots. It's nice and spicy. Mmm. 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 I like to cook my own food. I broke my restaurant streak and I did eat at a restaurant this past week. And um, the food that I had was delicious, but when I um, warmed up my own food, I said, you know, I really, I'm not missing out that much um, by cooking my own food because I really, really, really like how my food tastes. But this isn't a food video, this isn't about food but this is like i can eat something like this all the time um just it's just really cauliflower you can get the head of cauliflower you can chop it finely or you can get the pre-made one which is what i did and it's like a, it's like a rice with um assorted vegetables it's really good i think that healing has to be done on a mass scale, especially with those who um, have traditionally been oppressed the most because there are trigger points. What do I mean by that? Well. Many of us don't want to be told about what to do and definitely don't want to be controlled by people who remind us of people who formerly controlled us. And there has to be sensitivity on certain people's end of like this very like dark, sinister past and the role that they've played, not just here on American soil, but globally. As really like the masterminds of like extraordinary trauma and extraordinarily traumatic and psychological damaging behavior. And so when they continue to mimic that behavior, it makes it hard to renegotiate a relationship currently, right? Like for me, you know, I'm very forgiving. And um, I'm a, you know, person who doesn't really hold, I don't hold grudges for long. I learn, I decide if I want to continue a relationship with that person. If I choose to, I'm not gonna hold um, that against them, you know? If I choose not to, that's that. But there's no, there's no reconciliation if you're continuing to do the same exact things. Like, people can move forward if you correct your behavior. But if you continue to do the same things, how can you expect somebody to heal? And I feel like the objective is really not for people to heal. Honestly, I feel like, like that's the last thing. Um, that's the last thing the people that are orchestrating your trauma, the last thing they want is for, for you to heal. It's a sadistic relationship where there are certain people that find pleasure in pain. Find pleasure from your suffering. Find pleasure from your pain. Um, and then the thing is, they're doing things that are coercing your trauma. And simultaneously saying that you need healing from that trauma. But, but it's like still doing it. And I feel like what's more psychotic than someone, than uh, somebody having to heal from being victimized is the victimizer. That's psychotic.
to get pleasure from someone's pain, that's 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 the person that really needs healing. That's the person that really needs therapy. Both, but those that do those type of things. Anyways, this bring me brings me to the conversation of judgment. And um I feel like God is laughing right now. As people try to play God and do a horrible job at it. But the law of cause and effect, it's not exempt in certain categories. Like when you hear me talk, you usually hear me talk about myself. My past experiences, things that I've learned. Very seldom do you hear me talk about other people in a, in a, in a negative manner. Unless someone is actively trying to insert themselves or pry themselves into my life. I don't really talk about things that have nothing to do with me. I don't take my moral upstanding for granted. I'm not a perfect person. And the woman that I've become is not the woman I once was. You think I'm gonna do things? <coughs> it's a spice. You think I'm gonna do things <coughs> to compromise my moral standing that I've worked so hard for? And that people have tried, like, had to, like, intervene on my behalf for. Like, literally, like, had to intervene on my behalf. Shout out to my ancestors, Nerdine Faiz, and my grandma Annie. My grandma Annie had a saying she used to say often. And as much as she was a churchgoer, you know, she was not grandma was not into a bunch of gossip she just wasn't a, a gossiping woman and would remind people like literally she'd call people out and be like when you judge three fingers point back right back at you like in the middle of gossip my grandma would like make sure that she inserted that statement like oh y'all want to talk okay none of us are perfect people here none of us and I don't make spiritual laws. I just adhere to it because I don't take for granted my moral. Like, I don't take for granted, like, spiritual protection. Like, I don't take for granted. Um, And so, yeah, I'm not big on talking about people who have absolutely nothing to do with me. And the thing about spiritual law is that I don't make these rules. And um, 
whether it's coming from my mouth or another person's mouth, everybody, it's applicable to everybody. So don't kill the messenger. When you are so eager to expose another individual, talk about someone's past and the things that they've done and the person that they are and what they're doing on those things, just be prepared to get exposed. And I guarantee you, some people's transgressions, I put it this way, some people got a lot more to hide than others. A lot more to hide. So what makes someone placed on the cross versus someone else? What makes one person placed on a pedestal versus another? Hmm? What makes an individual feel like they can hold another person to a different standard than they hold themselves to? Is it an environment or a society that has an unspoken or subliminal rule that some people are less human beings than other people? Because don't forget, it was, it was a law that people of a certain skin were considered three-fifths of a human being. Do you think that that mentality, that mentality was purged just because the law changed? Another question is, who has the superiority complex and the inferiority complex? And I'm not saying this from a judgmental standpoint. I'm asking the question. If I hold you to a higher standard than I hold myself to, and I know that I'm unfair, and I know that I'm hypocritical, and I know that I have done way worse things, you know, I might be talking about something that you've, you've done during a moment of indiscretion. I might have blood on my hands. You know, I might have murdered. Or, I mean, there's just... A lot of different outfits, a lot of different things. So, who has the superiority complex and who has the inferiority complex? To me, that's like subliminally saying, like, I know I'm not shit. Like, I know, like, I'm a piece of shit. Like, I don't hold myself to those standards that I hold you to. I, I have higher expectations for you than I have for myself because I know that I'm a piece of shit. That's kind of what that's saying, like... Low key, right? Like if I if I hold myself to different standards than another person, if I put somebody on a higher moral uh, pedestal and hold them to a higher level of accountability than I hold my own self to, what does that mean? Because a lot of people think, oh, that's a superiority complex. I think it's an inferiority complex. The way that I see it, I think it's an inferiority complex. I think subliminally, somebody who do that really does believe that they are less, like they are, they are not as good as that person. Because why would you hold another person to higher standards than you hold your own self to? And um, you know, it's it's interesting. Like I keep repeating this, and I hope that this brings people peace. You don't get angry by the things that other people do. Because that's them. That's, that's, what, that's their character defect. Why are you going to get yourself enraged by someone else's character defect? It doesn't make sense. You know, you don't let anybody disturb your peace for nothing. Um, but with judgment, you know, it's like none of us, again, none of us are perfect people at all. 
none of us are perfect people. And every action, everything that you do to another human being, it's going to be, you're going to be held accountable for that. Nobody's exempt from that. And so I just ask people, you know, who want to dig up people's past and attempt to vilify others. Are you ready? Are you ready to get exposed? And this isn't even coming from like vengeance. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I said, none of us are perfect people. To say that I'm exempt from um, having any emotions of vengeance, I'd be lying to you. But I pray a lot. And I pray for peace. And I know that vengeance comes from rage. It comes from anger, you know. And, and that's just not anger that I have inside of me. Like, I'm not generally really even angry. Because I have this higher understanding that the law of cause and effect, everything that everyone does, they're going to be held accountable for. So why am I carrying a grudge? Why am I carrying anger based off of something that you're going to be held accountable for? And there's no exemption or exception. I think that the way that I see it, when I pray, I say the most merciful, the most compassionate, the most understanding. Because I need that mercy to be extended to me for the times that I was short-sighted, the times that I was ignorant, the times that I did things that were not pleasing to the most high. I need that mercy to be extended to me. But I'm not praying for mercy. I'm not praying for forgiveness. I'm not praying for redemption and still continuing that behavior. In order for all of those things that I want extended to me, I need, I have to first rectify and correct my behavior and like literally make a promise and say like, I'll never do these things to fall out of your grace again. Like, please, you know, I don't take this for granted. Like, I don't take your favor for granted. I don't take you for granted. Like, I don't take your interception in my life for granted by any stretch of the imagination. Like, I can't even express in words the magnitude of my gratitude and appreciation and thankfulness for you coming into my life because my fate could have been very different. And I'm judging myself based off of my moral standards. You know, I was never, I never, I never really like was out there like that. You know, um, frankly, the things that I've done that people, you know, most people would laugh at. Like, really, that's it. But for me, it's I, I put my, I judge myself to very a very high standard of morale, a mor a high moral standards. So I understand that not everybody has that same. Um, pressure that they put on themselves but what I am saying is that you know when you are just so willing to point your finger at other people know that that same judgment is going to come down on you and it's really only a matter of time and so if we are looking to be um, extended compassion if we are looking to be extended mercy redemption and forgiveness then we have to be of that same we have to be of that same um, we have to bring that same energy and um, the, the first step in, in correcting your behavior is to cease the behavior, to stop doing the things that you do that are, that are wrong to another person. Um, so I'll close again with Annie Coffey's you know, famous quote, you know, at least one that she would repeat. I don't think she came up with this, but when you point fingers, at least three, you know, three of those fingers point right back at you. Until next time, IG. Peace.